broadcasting and their microphones. Uh, we have your segment and you can post your questions there after our discussion. Uh, when you write, do indicate your name, your institution, and then your question. This is recorded because I have, uh, I have uh, designed this web series for my ecology laboratory student because there's a topic for their ecology lab. Go take sampling and uh, what I want them to learn is that for organisms, there are of course different uh, uh, ways of sampling. No? So, start uh, introducing our uh, panel of experts. No? So, firstly, no? uh, from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, uh, our expert ornithologist, Dr. Juan Carlos Gonzalez, sir. Hello. Good day. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon going to evening, sir. So next, so another uh, another ornithologist, an alumni of University of the Philippine Visayas, now sir, in University of the Philippines Diliman, or Carmela Española. Good afternoon, ma'am. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. The, ex the ornithologist of the National Museum of the Philippines, no? Doing his PhD in University of the Philippines, Los Baños, Mr. Rolly Oriza. Good afternoon, sir. Gandang hapon sa lahat. Thank you for uh, having me here. Thank you, sir. Next, from Father Saturnino Uri, a herpetologist, no? Ms. Tess Bonachita. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Thank everybody. Thank you for coming over. Diba? Uh, another herp from Herp Watch Filipinas, uh, Miss Louise Abigail De Layola. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Yay. Ang awkward, diba? Wait, wait. Medyo ang, ang awkward, diba? Uh, ganun ba yun? Uh, ganun yun, medyo awkward. May, may pa heart. <laughs> okay. Pwede pala yun. Okay. Okay. Yes. Anyway, going back, no. Uh, go to our mammalogist expert. So, <laughs> from the National Team of the Philippines, uh, Mrs. Sweepy Velus. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello, po. Good afternoon. Next, or uh, another mammalogist from University of the Philippines, Los Baños, uh, Dr. Philip Alvin. Afternoon, sir. Ay, magandang hapon sa inyo lahat. Uh, thank you very much, Eric, for inviting me here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Going there na rin naman. Okay na yun, sir. <laughs> uh, let me check. If it is, ayan, nandiyan. Oh, ayan din daw. Uh, nandiyan yung surprise natin. So, our surprise guest for today, no? Uh, from the National of the Philippines, another herpetologist, no? And I hope okay na si sir. Uh, let's welcome uh, Dr. Arvin Diesmos. Good afternoon, sir. Yay! Sir Arvin. Hey. Hi, Arvs. Sir, andyan po ba kayo? Hello. Ay, ayun. Andyan ba si sir? Yes. Hindi hindi mo ba siya ma-elevate to, ano, to co-host? Hindi po, sir. Ikaw lang po. Wait, lang ako lang. Oh, sige, sige. Sorry. Uh, make uh, co-host. Yeah, Sir Arvin, you can already share your video na. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Maayong hapon. Hey, hi. Hello. <laughs> good to see all of you. Ang dami niya. Oo nga. Good to see you. Hello. Okay. So today, you know, we, uh, it's, this is not a regular webinar. It's rather than, kasi it's a usual webinar, no? what we do is uh, we usually present the, day, the, the results of a research or for example, uh, the whole, a whole study. What we're going to have is a focus group discussion on how do we take uh, samples from the field. No? So how do we do field observations? Uh, and then of course, how to basically analyze the data afterwards. No? But before every, uh, bit, uh, so what we, 
know, the format of discussion is that I will ask some questions. Our expert panel will answer, and of course, they can also uh, add to the discussion if they want to. If they have their own questions, they can do as well. So it's just a free for technically it's a free form discussion rather than na kasi miss na miss na natin ng isat isa so bakal miss nating magkwento one so basically that's what we're gonna do today, no? As we go through our discussion, hopefully our kahit sa kwento one sa this short kwento one na gagawin natin ay matut may matutunan yung mga estudyante natin. So ano? I've designed this webinar also so that biologists and other scientists all over the Philippines will probably know their experts. As I have observed when 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 I was a student and now that I am also teaching in the University of the Philippines, is that sometimes Filipino experts know more foreign scientists than experts themselves. So maybe this is an opportunity. No, for everybody to at least know each other, uh, get to know it, and hopefully have a good collaboration in the near future. So let us start our short uh, folks group discussion. No, so first things first. Uh, Dun mo natay sa pang Miss Universe na question. Natang uh, I'll direct these questions to Ma'am Lala. No, so <laughs> Kailangan bang Miss Universe yung first question at ikaw ang unang sasagot. No? <laughs> Tayo sa homegrown ng UPV. So Ma'am Lala, um, basically, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, quite curious kasi Ma'am, as we have discussed no, when I was inviting you, uh, that the University of the Philippines Business mainly focuses on marine research. So what inspired you to do terrestrial research, but and why birds in particular ang naging focus ng study nyo? Um, wow, how to keep this short? Um, well, after I graduated, I really didn't know what to do with my life. Uh, I didn't know that I was really, uh, wala, siguro buknoy. I didn't know anything at all, no? Um, and then I attended a talk um, by German uh, scientists. And they were talking about the biodiversity of Panay. And it struck me that I knew so very little about Philippine biodiversity. Uh, it was such a big revelation to me that I graduated with a biology degree um, with this, ano, ano, uh, kabubuhan. Kabubuhan talaga. Um, nakakahiya. Um, nakakahiya na sa panay mismo. Where I grew up in, uh, where I studied biology, I didn't even know that there were critically endangered hornbills uh, in panay. So, um, sampal sa mukha ko yun, no? Nasampal din sa mukha ng mga nagturo sa akin. Hindi ako tinuruan. <laughs> um, pero yun nga, na sabi ko, babawi ako. No? Because the environment is suffering, yet not a lot of people go into environmental studies. Not a lot of people go into wildlife studies, biodiversity studies. Uh, konti lang. Um, because there's the notion nga na Well, you won't earn much. Totoo naman, hindi naman ako uh, talagang mayaman na mayaman ngayon. <laughs> Pero, uh, yun nga, uh, hindi naman ako namumulubi. O, oh, di ba? So, uh, yun din yung nakita ko na ano. Uh, but anyway, that's the thing. No? Uh, may na napukaw yung advocacy sa akin to inform a lot of people about the plight of the environment. In the Philippines, and and so I pursued this. No, I took up a wildlife studies masters, and then I took up ecology for my PhD. And yun lang. Sige, I'll I'll give the others the the chance to <laughs> to talk. Um, so. Perfect. Now it's it's quite also just it's quite interesting as well that Women's Month ngayon, no, and that we have actually two female herpetologists in our experts panel. Mm, yes. Quite weird, no? That because what sinabi natin amphibians and reptiles in general, 
it's more of a it's a man thing lalo na you know may 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 pagka sexist siya but we have two female herpetol the panel so i would like to ask first uh ma'am Tess, no so why herbs bakit herbs no hindi ko siya sabi dahil you're a female no but what inspired you to tackle uh amphibians and reptiles as a of interest of for, for studying them Thank you, Eric. Um, this is also um, same feeling with Mam Lala. So, when I was an undergrad, I know that there are biodiversity studies in our school in MSU IIT. And then I took my master's. And then we, um, at least for our group, we're very scared to do biodiversity studies or field work because number one, it's expensive. That's what they always like told us. So I cannot afford. So therefore, I chose to do a master's work on um, a laboratory where my advisor was just doing. And then eventually, uh, I went to uh, I worked here in one. And then um, our university wanted to study uh, to do work or to do work um, that are environment like related. So, somewhat like para kong um, encouraged or something like that. So, when I did my PhD, um, I, I shifted to another um, theme and that's on biodiversity studies. And it's, it's really funny because my, my advisor said, so what do you want to study? Do you want birds? Do you want like, um, I think I just want to study frogs because madali siyang hanapin. Totoo pala, hindi pala siya madaling hanapin. So, <laughs> so yun yung, yun lang yung, yung start ko. Like, um, I resonated with Ma'am Lala. Like, um, yung kabubohan na feeling or something ganun. Like, nag-email pa ako kay na Doc Ars before. Kay okay, Rave, sabi ko, I only know Bufo Marinos. I don't know anything at all. Like, sabi ko ganun, ang bobo ko talaga. Like, pero anyway, it's, that's how it all started for me. Um, it's really like the, the passion to do um, work and then eventually as you go along you get motivated and even if you're a woman if you really wanted to do the work that you love you would really try to do it anyway so that's how I I just came about to do um, herpetology so before I continue on no sige tanungin natin si si Ma'am so what is maliban sa akin ano yung inspiration mo sa talaga lang ako kaya nag sarili ko so maliban sa akin ano yung inspiration mo why why amphibians and reptiles actually um ang una talaga una talaga niyan is ano um ang una talaga birds ang gusto ko talaga niyan kasi wow. <laughs> kasi Hindi ko siya, hindi, ito yung hindi ko talaga ma, ano, ma, makakalimutan. I owe it to, uh, Ma'am May. Do, um, wife ni Dr. Jess. No? So I owe it to Ma'am May. Kasi, during our college years, when I was third year college, ito yung time na you're looking for a topic na for your research. Tapos parang sabi ni Ma'am May, advisor kasi namin siya dun sa organization, sa Biosoc. I know some of the students can relate to me. Uh, siya yung ano namin, advisor namin that time. Tapos sabi niya, uh, mag-invite tayo ng someone na iba naman, out of the box, hindi yung nasa lab, hindi, I mean, hindi lab work. So, in-invite nila doon si, siyempre, si Sir Arvin, si Ma'am Lala that time. Hindi pa, si Ma'am Lala. Opo. <laughs> then, the, for the mammals, si Ma'am Grace Ambal. Then, the organs, ganyan, ay, ay nag-present sila. Then, um, na-open yung mind ko to that topic na, ah, may ganito palang field ng bio na pwede kang mag-research, uh, mag-field work. So, hindi ko makakalimutan yung, si Ma'am Lala talaga hindi ko makakalimutan that time. Oh you will always have um, someone na mag bibigay sa iyo ng ng um ng spark on the on the field that you really want. Yun talaga, birds talaga. Then eventually, sabi kasi nila sa akin, wala kang magiging advisor kasi that time nasa USC na ako. So, ayun. 
um, dahil um, familiar na din naman ako with Mam uh, Mam May and Sir Arvin. I went to Sir Arvin. Pero pero eventually as I go along, dun ko na realize na konte ang nag-aaral ng herbs. And eventually I learned to love them kasi ito yung mga animals na kinakatakutan. Pero eventually if you realize sila yung may importance talaga. Kumbaga um um uh, how do I put it? Um, if you mo- go more deeply, sila yung um, in ano yun, uh, sila yung animals na mysterious na ma- mapapaisip ko na bakit sila bakit sila, bakit sila kinakatakutan or pinandibirihan unlike with other animals. So yun, that in, ano, yun yung um, in, naging inspiration ko why I'm doing doing this. Kaya pala, kaya pala ito. Kaya pala ako. No? Mysterious. Okay, kaya pala. Mas kailangan mysterious. But anyway, no? So, going back, no? Uh, small bits of uh, information, no? So, now that we have a general idea, no? What, of, what we are, of the, what are our scientists field, no? Uh, the main question is, when we're out in the field, no? Uh, for our specific groups of organisms that we study, Uh, the first dilemma, of course, is for a biologist, what sampling method should I use for a specific organism and for a specific habitat? So I would like to throw this question to Mam Sweepy. No? Uh, Mam Sweepy, for your group of uh, organisms that you study, mammals, no? how, for a specific habitat, for example, mangrove habitats, how do you choose what sampling method will you use? to collect samples for either diversity or ecology analysis? For, so, depende nga sa, um, yung sampling methods, usually, nagde-depend siya sa, sa, plan, sa project plan mo or yung, yung sa research study mo. So, kung, um, If you decide to sample in a, like um, wo, uh, mangrove area, yung mga areas na surrounded by water, so usually wala kang choice kundi um, uh, for mammals, uh, we set traps on ano, yung mga exposed branches, mga hindi naaabot ng, ng water. It's usually... Um, ako kasi, ano we eh, general yung ano namin, sa National Museum, we do general collection. So, walang, kasi one man person yung aming mga sections or, or taxa. So, wala kami choice. So, kahit bats or, or rodents or kahit ano, kung, kung, kung may mahahagip na large mammals, yon kung meron. Pero usually, large mammals, I stay away from them. Uh, uh, di ko siya masyadong di ko siya masyadong kung baga sa uh, favorite di, siya, di ko siya masyadong favorite so anyway so usually uh, I bring rat traps miss nets uh, usually kung ano yung ginagamit ng mga birds for uh, miss netting for for collecting birds ganun din nakiki share lang din kami. Kasi usually, pareho lang din sila ng flyways. And then, pero magkaiba lang ng time ng uh, uh, like, usually, syempre, ang mammals, usually nocturnal. So, ang gabi lang kami. Unlike birds na 24-7, nandun sila. Pwede silang tumama dun sa net. So, uh, I also use harp traps. Although mahal yun, so dalawa lang meron ako. Salamat sa project. <laughs> so, um, isa din yung ano, camera traps. Although wala kami, pero the last time na try, na, na-experience ko with UPLB um, si Miss Pau de Gia. So, na, na-experience ko how to, ano, yung set ng camera traps. Kasi, uh, 
helpful ang camera traps for those mammals na um, usually um, nasa taas or hindi mo mahahagip ng traps. So, maganda siya. Maganda siyang option. Although mahal lang din, expensive. Tapos, kung dalawa lang, medyo hindi maganda yung hindi productive. Um, so, uh, cage traps. Um, Pagkamit, cage traps is uh, usually kung wala kang balak na mag-uwi ng voucher specimens, use cage traps. Yeah. If you will, uh, only uh, do ecological sampling or yung, uh, kung kukuha ka lang ng mga hair follicles so or blood samples. Okay na yung cage traps. And also for um, observations. Kung mag you observe mo yung behavior ng animal. Yun. Um, kasi able to answer <laughs> ng tama. Sampling methods, di ba? Oh, yes, ma'am. So, Sir Philip, would you like to add to that? Especially for, uh, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you're... Uh, I think you are doing ecological studies as well for for bats. So, what specific sampling methods are you using for when when you when you go out in the field, and uh, uh, what other criteria do you look for, you no, know, to determine what appropriate sampling method will you use in the field? Uh, well, uh, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, great answer, Monsik. Uh, Segundang ko lang. Well, for bats, well, I, I, I'm studying bats now. Well, previously, mga rodents din ba? Mga early 2000. But for bats, kasi we have 79 species. And then, well, generally, they're subdivided into fruit bats. Uh, Non-echolocating to crudely echolocating bats. And then, of course, we have the, the micro bats. Well, general classification. And then these micro bats actually echolocate. So they use sonar or sound, ultrasonic sound or frequencies para makapag-navigate. So with this trait of you know, navigation, nakapag evade sila ng mist nets, ordinary mist nets. I'm sure uh, a lot of your students are familiar with mist nets. Yung di standard na sa ground, uh, they can only work for so long and very limited yung success rate niya in capturing insectivorous bats or echolocating bats. So, mangyayari, baka magkaroon ng false negative or baka pagka, let's say, mag-survey kayo using only standard mist nets, hindi mo talaga nasasample yung uh, the whole diversity of of the bats that are present in the, ano. Uh, so, for for me, what I'm what I'm doing for the past 10 or 15 years is uh, employ multiple uh, capturing techniques. So, of course, nandiyan pa rin si mist nets on the ground. Uh, I also set up we also set up nets to sa, sa taas, this canopy. Uh, tawag namin as canopy nets or sky nets or langit. Mga ganun, uh, langit. And then, of course, uh, meron din kaming uh, dito, tunnel trap. Para siyang kulambo, na, pero bukas yung unahan. So what will happen is that a bat will enter the salob ng malaking kulambo and then there's someone inside with an insect net. Isasara nila yung kulambo and then, yun, kahuhulihin niya na yung bat sa loob ng kulambo. It's, uh, it's a very uh, spectacular sight. Makita mo yung tao nagawuli nung, nung panike. Parang ang pwede nga siyang Olympic event eh. Pabilis ang makahuli ng, ng, ng panike sa loob. And then we also use, of course, I uh, mentioned the minimum sweeps, uh, harp traps. It's a, it's, it's a bit expensive and cumbersome. Pero uh, the rewards, man. Uh, yung trade-off nung medyo mahal, cumbersome. But the trade-off is really, well, talagang mas, sulit na sulit. Talagang, uh, kasi... It's a passive capturing device. Eh. Hindi mo na siya kailangan bantayan. So, iset up mo na siya bago maghapon. Uh, Balik-balikan mo na siya every, I don't know, every three hours. And then, pagdating na alas 10, matulog ka na ng gabi. No, alas 10. And then, balikan mo na ng alas 5. It's gonna do its work by itself. Uh, unlike with your mist nets, uh, sub-canopy nets, uh, yung tunnel trap, ayun, uh, medyo talagang labor-intensive yan. Uh, no. And then, of course, we also use uh, V-nets. I'm not sure if some of your familiar students are familiar with this. Uh, bale, dalawang mist net, ginawa namin parang letter V. So, tinatapat lang namin sa Kablan Trail. So, using the concept of a tunnel trap, but medyo uh, let, letter V lang siya. So, pag kami pumasok, uh, may, may mapask na 
na in transit ng mga panike, but these are insectivorous bats. Isasara do lang namin and then kuha. And then of course, we've been employing for the last five years as well yung uh, bat detectors. Uh, so, well, insectivorous, oh, uh, echolocating bats, uh, my insectivorous bats have their own unique echolocation signal or echolocation call. So may mga specific frequencies, may mga specific durations. Uh, uh, well, of course, these are ultrasonic, mga maabot lampas ng mga 20 kilohertz. Kasi ang human hearing, audible hearing is from, well, from 1 to 20 kilohertz. So these insectivorous bats can go as high as 150 kilohertz, so talagang ultrasonic. And you, you know, sabi ko, they have their own signature call. And once you record those calls, um, mahuli mo sila, ma-record, magkakuha ka ng voucher calls. Pwede, mo na, pwede ka na din halos uh, hindi na kailangan manghuli ng mga panike. As long as you have that library of calls, so pwede ka mag-transit, i-record mo lang, and then you check on your database, ah, eto yun, eto yun, eto yun. So, uh, the downside is it's, it's, it's relatively expensive, although they're now making uh, some models that are uh, affordable. Uh, yun nga lang, uh, affordable, it's relative. Uh, Pinaka-affordable yata is parang 17,000 pesos. Pero I, I really have to tell, kasi ganun na rin ang labanan across the world eh. I mean, ganun na rin ang kalakaran ganun, uh, sa, sa buong mundo. Uh, everyone is using uh, echo uh, bat detectors. It's been used since 19, early 80s. So, I mean, tayo sa Pilipinas, uh, Ngayon-ngayon pa lang tayo nakakahabol eh. So, yeah. So, depende. I mean, you, uh, for first study, uh, you have to use multiple methods. You have to use multiple capturing methods para ma-ensure na uh, ma-reflect talaga yung true diversity. Otherwise, parang false negative lang ang lalabas yan if you're just confining your your, your capturing methods to, to, to one. Uh, maraming nawawala. Maraming hindi nagpapakita. Okay. Sorry, I talked too long. Thanks, sir. So, uh, Speaking of similarities between uh, sampling methods between mammals, uh, Sir JC, so what is what are the what are the unique sampling methods at least for birds na ineemploy nyo sa field? And uh, kasi sa birds uh, as because they are fly, no. So how do you limit your sampling area? No, ano yung criteria na ginagamit nyo to limit your sampling area? And what are the used for sampling birds. You there's the unmute. Okay, thank you. So um sir nam Are you pare? Yes sir. Yeah. Okay. So I have to raise your question first. Ano ba talaga gusto mo malaman in terms of why you using birds as a as a, uh, as a as a, a, a focus taxon uh, to use into say ecological studies and diversity studies. Of course, diversity because um, birds are a perfect bio indicator. They're perfect uh, indicators of diversity. Uh, they're also quite easier to to study because uh, one, they're diurnal, so hindi ka mo na kailangan magpuyat. And they're easy to distinguish from each other. If you have a field guide, then it's easier to to look into form and function and shape and color. And also because it's easier to um, determine species easily, be, not just be between um, color and function, but also with bioacoustics. Sabi nga ni, ni Philip, uh, it's, it, for birds, it's all audible sound that you can actually distinguish or call. So it's easier to kind of a parashang default. So it's kind of like the default species. Palang perfect for for study, but it's only a subset of what you have. Kaya importante na holistic yung approach mo. So there are a lot of sampling methods. Um, I'll just share this one for you. Uh, yeah. So for example, this one is a. It's actually you can download this for free on the internet. It's expedition field techniques, which we use for bird surveys. This is I think the two thousand version. Uh, which is for free from bird life. So it actually encourages uh, people to do, especially students, to do their research. And anja na rin lahat nung sampling design mo. Kasi kailangan alamin mo muna yung question. You have to know what your question is first before you can actually 
um, do your your sampling design. Ano ba yung kailangan uh, diversity pa ang gusto mo? Eh? Population analysis ba gusto mo? Density pa ang gusto mo? Alibin? Or do you want to look into say uh, networking between species, species flocks, uh, diet, niche partitioning? So it all depends on your question before you actually do your sampling. Um, so I think just an example, kasi sabi mo yung size. So I'll stop this one and show you this other one. Share screen. There it is. So looking into say um, forest armbills as bioindicators. Um, for one thing, you want to count, say, population of two species and whether they uh, can occur sympathetically or can coexist between an area. Kasi parao sila halos ang diet, parao sila frugivorous. Then you have to look into your area. For example, here, um, I had to compare uh, populations across a gradient between good forest, degraded forest, and each area was about 16 hectares. So 16 hectares is 16 hectares na good, 16 hectares are medyo secondary, 16 hectares are degraded. For just you to, to do, say, uh, a set of 100 points to do the population analysis. So, yes, yeah, 16 hectares. Laka na pinayat ko nun. Walking across three sets of 16 hectares. It was easier for me to do counts kasi with these species, isa lang yung, no, it easily determined the call. Big naman siya, no? The trick with say the kalau or the the the, the, the first hornbill, you need to hear the difference in the call. You can actually distinguish them all the diff easily by just uh, doing the point counts upon these three different sites. So you can have a uh, an estimate of the population. So for example, here you have to look into say ano yung uh, condition ng areas, you have to compare vegetation between those areas. So here you can actually see the difference between the populations, between the rufous hornbill in red, of course, well, it's just a degraded, and the more resilient species, which is a smaller charictic hornbill. So this is just kind of one of those questions that you have to, to look into uh, before you actually do any sampling design. I'll stop there. Next. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Ma'am Lala, would you like to add to that? What about other bird species? Ah, uh, uh, yun nga, uh, as already mentioned by Kuya JC, na, depende yun. You have to start with a question. What do you want answered? And you have to build around that question. Um, kung ano yung methods na gagamitin mo. So, uh, like if you want to look at uh, the ecology of cavity nesting birds, <laughs> because that's what I'm working on now. So you probably need to climb up trees and then measure uh, the weight of uh, young parrots or young birds and then see how it develops over time. Uh, and dami, and dami pwedeng tingnan. You can look at um, parasites, you can look at um, kung ikaw ay vet, veterinarian, then ibarin yung tanong na sasagutin mo. Uh, it can be, um, it can, uh, you know, uh, ano nga ba ito, blood uh, parameters, no? Pwedeng yun yung tingnan mo. Uh, madaming pwedeng tingnan, no? Um, for my work, I tried to look at densities of birds. Ilan ba yung individuals per square kilometer? Madami ba sila doon? Or konti lang? Are they rare or not? Yun yung mga tanong na pwedeng, uh, pwedeng yung tanungin din, no? Um, and then try to see uh, what is the number that you can find in a protected area. So, um, for species that are very rare, then protection is needed. No? So legislation, you, you lobby for legislation to protect the species. Um, you try to start a program to educate locals. Uh, that is if you're doing conservation work. Madami, madami. Sa usapin ng pwedeng gawin 
na pag-aaral ng mga ibon, madaming pwedeng gawin. Uh, so yun, uh, pwedeng populations, you can look at specific biology. May sudyante ako na gusto niyang aralin yung feathers. Itingnan niya kung pwede niyang ma-identify yung ibon uh, based on uh, just the feather. No, tingnan mo yung feather. Ano yung characters na feather na yun? Will you be able to identify the bird itself no? based on that? So mga ganun. Um, or yun, ecology, biology. Um, uh, andami, andaming pwede. Movements, no? Uh, landscape ecology, no? Tingnan mo. Uh, do they always go to the same areas for migration? Uh, what is the status of their migration, uh, you know, uh, flyway? Is it threatened or not? Uh, kasi problema natin ngayon yan. Kasi yung, uh, isingit ko talaga, no? Yung bulakan doon na airport, no? They're trying to destroy a whole wetland to build this airport na hindi ko naintindihan kasi marami namang lugar na pwede silang magpatayo ng airport. Why destroy a wetland na marami ng threatened species in those areas? No? So, if you're a wildlife biologist, you can lobby for the conservation of species based on science, no? based on uh, research, no? uh, results. So, yun. Yun yung mga pwedeng gawin. Um, Sige, mamaya, ulit. Oo, kayo na muna kasi madami na akong nasabi. <laughs> Dahil marami na doon nasabi siya, Mala. Sir Rolly, would you like to add to that? Especially with your specialization right now. Oo, oh, sa museum. Oh, oh. Sa, sa museum work, sir. Ano ang oh, oh. ng museum when it comes to collecting birds? Uh, okay, uh, ang ganda hapon ulit sa lahat. Uh, um, Tama naman yung sinabi ni Ma'am Lala na marami talagang pwede pag-aralan sa birds. And gaya din ng sinabi ni Sir JC na kailangan alam mo yung uh, ano yung tanong mo na gagawin kasi magdidepende doon yung data na kukollect mo sa field. Pero in terms of sa amin, sa National Museum, uh, since we collect voucher specimens, um, pinapractice namin yung isa sa mga popular na uh, method ng pag-survey ng birds, yung uh, two-kilometer transect. Uh, although, uh, marami namang modifications na pwedeng gawin along the transect, pero uh, what we're trying to practice uh, in our survey areas is to maximize yung collection ng data. And then, um, dun sa 2 kilometer transect na ginagawa namin, importante yung segment between uh, dun sa loob ng transect, like sinesegment siya na every 250 meters. So, magkakaroon ng at least 9 stations dun sa 2 kilometer transect. And then we record uh, every uh, species na may encounter namin dun sa, sa transect. So, what we're trying to to do doon ay to collect uh, and collect data and look for a, a pattern. Kasi may sa iba-ibang areas sa Philippines, kung mag-survey ka ng birds and using the same, <clears throat> uh, baka may makitang pattern ng mga species like yung territoriality. Um, kasi may mga kita kami na <clears throat> for a particular transect, uh, dun mo lang talaga parati nakikita yung or nare-record yung isang species ng birds. So baka may mga ganun na pattern. So yun yung uh, ginagawa namin uh, using the 2 kilometer transect. So to collect at uh, to maximize data na makukuha namin doon and then to look for patterns in the future kung maka-accumulate kami ng maraming data sa maraming lugar sa Philippines. So, yun naman yung uh, ginagawa namin. I think, thank you, Sir Rolly. So, jumping from birds back to the ground. So, let's talk about uh, herbs naman. 
Sir Dolam, the, the, this question is for Dr. Arvin Jesmos. Uh, Dolam, yung amphibians and reptiles. Uh, what are the major differences, sir, between sampling for amphibians and sampling for reptiles for either diversity or ecological studies? <clears throat> okay, sampling, no? Sampling, Eric? Yes, sir. Siguro, Ana, mag-hello muna ako sa... Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you, mga old friends and uh, mga, mga students, new students. Um, ano nga yung tanong mo? <laughs> sampling? Plump together, sir, yung herbs, amphibians and reptiles. Ano yung... Okay. Uh, um, <clears throat> siguro ano, i mag step back lang tayo ng konti. Yung uh, herpetology kasi, again, one of the major uh, group to study here in the well, global. No? Uh, pero, of course, you know, any group naman that you will, that you intend to study, especially sa Philippine setting, very important, you no. Know, uh, maging ko anong group man yan, you know, insects, inverts, flora, uh, ixora, parang si uh, Ses, uh, Doc Ses Banag, uh, and, and so on and so forth, no. Lalo na ngayon sa context na sa, dito sa Philippines, kasi uh, as, as, as eloquently mentioned by uh, the previous speakers, no, sila Philip, si JC, si, si Ma'am Carmela, uh, si Tess, and of course si Abby, lahat kasi dito sa atin, con, uh, si Rolly, <laughs> NCP, sorry. Uh, marami pa tayo na kailangang pag-aralan. Alright? So, tatandaan nyo lang yon. Uh, again, you don't need to... Ang masasabi ko lang, eh, kung ano yung gusto nyong pag-aralan, go for it. Alright? Hindi dahil... You don't you don't think about <clears throat> sorry you don't think about na gusto kong pag-aralan itong faunal group na to dahil sisikat ako no no yon all right wag na wag niyo iisipin yon especially when you're starting to be, to be one now uh, it's not about in the end kasi it's not about being sikat or you know ikaw yan may pangalan ka it's about the thing you did, all right? Kung ano yung na-publish mo, yung paper yung importante, hindi yung, for me, ah, yung paper yung importante, hindi yung authors. Okay? So, yun. So, tandaan nyo lang yun. Again, lalo na sa mga, mga uh, bata na gustong maging field biologist. And field biologist is a, it's a, it's a very um, fulfilling na, um, na career. Uh, katulad nga sinabi ni, ni Ma'am Lala, and ito, ito rin yung palaging sinasabi nila, you know, nila Dr. Perry Ong, yung mga nakalipas ng mga pumanaw na nating friends na no, ni uh, Leonard, tsaka ni Danny Balet especially. Hindi naman tayo yayaman talaga materially sa pagiging field biologist. Pero hindi rin naman tayo magkikirap. Alright? Sakto lang, kumbaga. Okay? Tapos, uh, ayun, um, just uh, do the science itself. Okay, mabalik tayo sa question. Uh, ang herpetology kasi uh, for the longest time, ang mga western science, science natin, nilamp ang amphibians and reptiles, right? Pero as we all know, based on genetics, you know, phylogenetics and so on, malayo talaga sila. They're not actually quite related. Diba? For example, ang reptiles more related sa birds. Diba? Ang amphibians, uh, nauna kasi siya. Eh. Uh, nagsimula yan sa may, may mga may aquatic kasi sila. So, medyo fish pa nga sila related in terms of other groups. No? So, in terms of sampling these two groups, definitely magkaiba rin. Okay? Uh, amphibians and reptiles, definitely kailangang you need to be sampling during the day and also at night. Alright? 
uh, tandaan nyo yun. Kasi magkakaiba yung lifestyle sila eh. And if you guys are uh, planning to do a study, yung kunyari master's thesis muna, uh, I would, uh, uh, well, hindi ko i-encourage sa inyo to do a uh, herpetofaunal thing. Just focus on a, on a certain group. Para, number one, madali kayo matapos. Kasi importante, graduate kayo. <laughs> okay. Number two, uh, it's doable. All right. Number three, uh, mas malaki yung maidadagdag ninyo sa um, science if you do a specific, you know, if you tackle a specific question. Eh. Okay. So mag, again, magkaiba kasi yung sampling methodologies sa both groups and mahirap talaga ito. Um, uh, doing field work is probably the best part of your of being a field biologist. Lalo na kung mga bata pa kayo. All right. Pero pag kami, pag guma parang si JC Si JC, 55 na yan. Ako, 51 pa lang ako. Eh. Um, um, med medyo, may mga considerations na kay kasi to do fieldwork. Pero syempre, kaya pa rin. Na? And um, doing fieldwork is one of the best part ng being a field biologist like us. Na? So, yun yung hindi yung enjoyable part. Eh. Pero of course, the other parts, you know, coming up with the question, yun yung importante, um, research question, and then knowing your methodologies, importante yon, And then of course, writing your thesis, um, uh, well, siguro yun yung nasa top, na? Uh, kasi yun yung magpapatapos sa iyo, sa iyong um, degree. Okay? Uh, again, babalik lang ako sa tanong ni Eric kasi ano na, no? halo-halo na. I guess pag tumatanda ka, ganun talaga. No? May mga, okay lang. Uh, if, may mga, if, 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 may mga wisdom na kuno. Uh, <laughs> methodologies are vastly different. Uh, amphibians and reptiles. Uh, kung kayo ay mag amphibians kailangan nocturnal ring kayo. Kung mag reptiles kayo, ganun pa rin. You have to sample both during the day and at night. Kasi marami pa rin mga species ng reptiles na active during the night. And usually ang amphibians natin active during at night. Although may mga, again, may mga na-discover na, na tayo ng mga species na crepuscular or uh, depende rin sa, sa atmospheric conditions. Kunyari biglang umulan, magiging active sila eh. Right. Pero uh, again, kailangan, you, you need to know your methodologies and may mga ano naman yan, may mga existing na, na mga standardized na mga methods. Alright? Uh, siguro before I close, ang importante na realize ko sa, sa pag-aaral, uh, you need to have a lot of samples. Okay? Kung meron kayong, kunyari, kung kayo ay nagta-transect, dapat marami kayong transect line na uh, i-establish. It doesn't matter kung mahaba siya, you know, 2 kilometers or 5 kilometers. Pero kung ang sample size mo ay 1, n equals 1, yung power nun, as you know, sa so statistics, sobrang baba. Pero if you're sampling, for example, if your transect line is 100 meters lang or 500 meters lang, pero marami, then, um, yeah, uh, power nun mas mataas. Pero of course, again, uh, you also have to watch out yung mga, you know, pseudo replication, yung mga ganun tipo. So, which is, uh, siguro, ang masasabi ko lang, and I'm sure ito rin yung sasabihin ng mga professors na nagsalita kanina, uh, just, uh, you, you, re you really need to know the science kasi you, you while, you're, while you're a student, you really have to be a biologist muna. Okay? Pag nakagraduate na kayo, you can be, you can be, you can do anything you want to, to do. Okay. Yun lang muna. Thank you, Sir Arvin. So going from 
getting biotech samples, one of the more important things as well when we do ecological and diversity studies are also the biotic factors. No? So to go into that discussion, may I ask uh, Ma'am Abby, no, for for herbs, for amphibians and reptiles, for example, of course you need to have a specific question first, no, before you determine what specific abiotic factors you will measure. But uh, my question is, so what are the common abiotic factors that are important for your group of interest? For example, for you, Ma'am Abby, amphibians and reptiles. So ano yung mga abiotic factors na commonly na measure nyo sa field? And what, how do you measure them and what are the equipments that you, that you use to measure abiotic factors? Okay. Um, yung mga, ano, ito nga, abiotic and biotic siya, eh, factors. So, both. So, for different um, animals naman, may ano yan eh, um, may different um, variables silang kinukuha. Which is, ito yung base, base to kung saan din, kung saan sila, mostly saan sila nakikita or kung ano yung habitat nila. So, for amphibians and reptiles, which is um, this one, um, uh, based din naman ito sa mga um, publication, sa mga literature. So, for, ano, for amphibians and reptiles, for the um, biotic and abiot, mga biotic factors that we get or the variables that we get is like yung um, canopy cover. So for the canopy cover, we're um, uh, we're using uh, for this one. But like for the canopy, canopy cover, kinukuha namin yan. For the undergrowth and the, for the undergrowth, kinukuha din namin yan. Yung pati yung um, yung leaf litter. Uh, leaf litter, kinukuha din namin yan. For the uh, for the leaf litter naman ito ay kinukuha namin ito para makuha namin din ang moisture content. Yan. Uh, what do else that we get from the ano from from the from there um for other naman for the other studies that I see um they also get the number of logs. Yan. Um rock Kasi tinitingnan itong mga logs and rocks na to Dito nakatera yung mga lizard. Mo, uh, ayan, mga, mostly mga, ano to, mga skink. Yan, dyan sila, dyan sila nakatera. Yan, tinitingnan din, din nila if the, yung area, yung air, study area nila is may, kung marami bang pollen logs, marami bang decaying logs. So, Within, for herb kasi, ang ginagamit naming transic is 10 meters by 100. So, 100 meters yung haba ng transic. So, within that 10 by 100, dun kami uh, nagbibilang, nag, nag-check ng mga environmental variables. So, yun, um, may, ma, meron din per point, meron din... Um, from the uh, from start from the middle and uh, from the end yan mga, mga uh, ganun yung method namin ng pagkuha ng mga environmental variables so thank you ma'am ma tes uh, what other uh, data do you collect po? when you do when you do of course you do you collect your samples you bring them to the lab uh, Ano pa yung mga data na kinokolekt nyo when it comes to the, whether diversity or ecological sound, uh, uh, studies? Uh, what other data do you get from your samples that is uh, very relevant to your study? Um, salamat again, Eric. Um, just an example of the current studies that we are doing. Um, we do feeding niche analysis for amphibians and reptiles but basically now we did, we have we have gathered um, diet diet data for amphibians so even in the field after we collect them we take out their um, stomachs and we put them in a um, in an 95% uh, alcohol and then we bring them to the lab we also um, get um, 
muscles from the legs of the amphibians or even like reptiles. So we also take that to the lab. So when we are in the lab, we, of course, we open the stomachs and then we get the prey items. So we identify what they are eating. And um, we use the leg muscles for another type of analysis, which is um, stable isotope analysis. What we really wanted to understand is um, um, how the uh, how amphibians or how amphibians are partitioned in in the environment. So how do they um, allow one from the other to like um like how they survive there even if they are like lumped in one area? For example, for one riparian community where there are so many amphibians, so how are they? Um, how are they distributed within the stream? So we take that and then we um, we compare them using the um, stomach samples, and then we also um, try to get in confirmation if they are really eating these um, um, prey items through stable stable isotope analysis. So yun lang yung mashare ko like for now on laboratory based data. And also, um, if you have voucher specimens, you can get morphological, uh, morphometric characters. You can measure anything that you want. And of course, um, the same thing. Um, you have to know what's your question, so that um, you can. Pro you have to know the science. I, I agree with everyone who is talking like before. That's the key um, before you're going to do any analysis or any fieldwork collection. Thank you, ma'am. Ito yung favorite question ko dito sa mga sa, sa web series ito. Sir JC, what are the difficulties that you usually face in doing field work? And usually, how do you troubleshoot these difficulties? Kung meron man, do you have difficulties during field observations? Um, yeah. Um, sabi ko kanina yung, for example, if you're doing uh, identification, um, you have to be familiarized with the species, especially if you're doing, say, diversity studies. You want to look into species richness. You have to identify the species in the field, um, especially with, if you're doing transect counts. Dapat automatic yun. Pag nakita mo split second yung ibon, dapat ma-identify mo na siya. And that's what field guides are for. Um, you have to also practice before you do your transects. Uh, para pag nakita mo, madali mo na siya ma, ma recall what species it is. So you actually bird watching as a hobby is a useful way to practice uh, identification of birds. And also with the hearing of calls. Um, now it's it's very maganda nga yung opportunity now because everything's available online. So here, even though we're all kind of yeah, we're sort of in in quarantine, pero um, everything's available online for you to kind of pre-study and prepare yourself. Uh, Lahat ng references are available online. So even you get uh, free field guides online or even the online databases to identify uh, species. And also your mga calls are available online for you to hear and practice. So when you do your identification, it gives you more confidence. Ako din nagkakamali ako, especially with uh, with shorebirds. Magkakamukha pag nag-winter plumage na sila, halos pare-pareho na silang brown and and blotched and barred and so it's kind of difficult especially if you're counting birds in a group so yun kailangan mo din mag-practice in terms of estimating species but now because sabi nga ni ma'am test maraming tools na pwedeng gamitin um you also have to make use of the available um hindi lang techniques but also the available um, equipment so you can use either drones to help you count use camera traps kasi hindi ka baka you're not always there all the time, so make use of the technology available for you. Um, even with mapping species distribution, there's GIS. So I think you have to um, widen yourself. It's a matter of uh, thinking about, say for example, sabi ni Ma'am Teskanina about habitats. You need to look into an interdisciplinary research. You go across different groups. So, ikaw nga sabi ni, may difficulties ka pa. So, nung nag-aral kami about forest canopy, because canopy research is quite few in the Philippines, I had to learn SRT. Yes, payat pa ako dyan. So, 
kaya ko tong umakyat ng puno. But I don't think na. Nowadays, yeah, kailangan mo talaga mag-practice. So you go across the different groups, not just studying the fauna itself. You have to look into uh, uh, the flora. Um, kung may, may, may insectivorous birds kang kailangan aralan, and alam mo din dapat yung arthropod content. Yeah, even the structure of the trees. So it has to be an interrogative research um, that covers uh, uh, different layers. Of course, hindi ikaw gagawa no. You do a collaboration with other people. And even with students, you can do individual parts of a project and collectively magpo-provide kayo ng data to give you a better picture. But of course, you will focus on the study that you want, whether you're studying um, uh, frogs or you're studying uh, reptiles, you're studying birds, or even you're studying uh, bats and mammals across, say, an even habitat and collectively you will provide the data, whether diversity or other ecological uh, information that you want to share. So, beautiful. I'll stop there. <laughs> Thanks, Sir JK. Ma'am Lala, would you like to add to that? Ano po yung mga difficulties na usually na experience ninyo when you're doing field works? And how do you usually troubleshoot those difficulties? Ah, uh, difficulties. Well, uh, before we've had issues with um, dealing with uh, local authorities that think of us as a bunch of girls uh, up to nothing. No, kasi uh, dati mga kasama ko, sina Nick Dai, sina Joni, uh, puro kami girls. Tapos we're leading an expedition na ang kasama namin, mga katutubo, mga kulot. So, alam mo, it came to a point na nainis ako kasi medyo mababa ang tingin nila sa mga kasamahan namin na katutubo. Nagpakulot ako ng buhok. Pakulot ako. Ay, sino yung mga... O, sino yung sinasabi mong kulot? Kasi kulot din ako eh. No? Para, just to drive the point that, um, yun nga, uh, huwag niyo i-discriminate yung mga kulot and uh, uh, tsaka yung mga babae. Lagi nila siya nasabi, ah, sa tingin ko, hindi nyo kakayanin yung doon, yung doon. Siya mga limang oras yung lalakarin, paglakad namin ganyan, isa't kalahating oras. So, yung mga, may ganun, uh, nararanasan namin yan. Um, ako personally, I think na I don't even, I don't even experience this discrimination among my colleagues no, in the academia. Pero sa mga locals na pinupuntahan ko, hindi sila makatingin sa mata ko. Kinakausap ko sila about certain species. Alam niyo ba yung ito at yung hayop na ito, itong ganito, in-interview ko? Hindi makatingin sa mata ko dahil babae ako. Yun yung conclusion ko eh. Kasi pag tumingin sila sa iba, nakasamahan ko na lalaki, yung kinakausap ako pero yung tingin niya doon sa lalaki ko naka, nakasama. Eh, mga ganun. Uh, nakakainis siya pero uh, okay lang. Sanay na ako sa ganun. At saka uh, I show them who is boss. <laughs> la, la, la. Ba baka naman may crush sila dun sa kasama niyong lalaki. <laughs> may <Di ba>? point <laughs> ka! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, posible talaga. Posible. Oo. Pero yun nga, uh, paminsan nakakainis kasi uh, maliit ang tingin nila sa mga kababaihan. Uh, isa yun. Isa yun sa difficulties. Ano pa yung ibang difficulties? Um, yun, uh, well, ito, I've been passed up for work before kasi ang sabi nila, eh, babae yan eh. <laughs> Oo, yun yung sabi. Ah, wag nyo lang yan yung component sa expedition kasi babae yan. Uh, ito yung kwento sa akin. Pinalusot lang sa akin. So, uh, natawa lang ako. Uh, so, nangyayari din siya yung ganun. Uh, tapos, ano pa? Meron ding... Uh, well, there is... I, I totally accept na there is that difficulty uh, in a woman's natural capacity to carry heavy stuff. Uh, hindi ko naman talaga kaya kargahin yung mga sako-sako namin na supplies. Hindi ko naman kaya yun. Uh, kaya ko yung bago. Kinakaya ko yun. Tinatry ko talagang kayanin. Pero 
uh, yun nga ang notice ko lang na uh, kaya ko namang magbayad ng quarter. O di ba nabigyan ko pa sila ng trabaho. <laughs> uh, pero I mean that doesn't discount me dapat for uh, being ano uh, for doing the work of a scientist kumbaga. Oo. So yan, tapos ano pa? Nawawala kami ng gamit sa field paminsan. Ah, uh, experience din ito ni na Sir Perry at saka yung team niya na they encounter people up in the in the mountains inaano sila uh, hinaharas um, tapos kinukuha yung gamit nila ako ang experience ko lang experience ko lang na i-interrogate every time na i go to a new site i always go to the nearest na military outpost magpaalam na ito ito yung team ko ito yung mga itsura namin ito yung mga pangalan, ito yung contact details. Binibigay ko yan. Pero, in, within mga three to five days na naandun kami sa site, lagi silang may pinapadala. Truckloads of military. They think na kami ay NPA dahil taga-UP kami, umaakyat kami sa bundok, akala nila NPA kami. So, ito, this is a real danger. Kasi pag akyat mo sa bundok, Nandun din yung mga military na yun, kasama namin. Pero na-notice ko, nung umakyat kami ng Mount Apulao, they couldn't keep up with us. Eh, paano? Eh, puro lahat armas yung dala nila. Ang bigat-bigat. Eh kami, yung backpack lang namin ang dala namin. No? So, uh, hirap sila. So, feeling ko delikado kasi naiipit ang mga researchers. At saka hindi lang researchers. Lumabas na ang issue na ito because the researchers are able to voice out no yung mga dangers sa ganito pero yung katutubo na andun sa bundok na yon this is their experience every single day kasi nasabi nila ay ano yan informant yan ng military doon naman sa kabila informant yan ng NPA so walang papuntahan itong mga katutubo no so i'm just raising some of the issues na nakikita namin sa field while doing field work and research, no? Uh, nakakalungkot. Uh, yun siguro, those are the difficulties na uh, we've encountered na delikado talaga. Uh, one time, nagkaroon ng clash uh, doon sa bundok nung pumunta kami sa, sa Abra. Kasi ano yun eh, sa border na ng Abra at Kalinga. Uh, pagbaba namon on the day na bumaba kami, narinig namin na nagputukan doon sa taas. Tapos na, nalaman namin na doon sa lugar kung saan kami umalis, uh, meron uh, encounter na nangyari. So apparently, uh, may mga NPA doon hindi namin alam na nandun pala. Tapos nag-clash doon sa umakyat na military. Anyway, uh, mga ganun. Oh, there was one time na in-interrogate ako ng ano. Uh, uh, noong una, mabait pa ako. Ay, magkapiho kayo. Ayan, may pandisyon kami na binili nung sa baba. So, yun, kumakain na siya. Yung tanong pa ulit-ulit, parang naluloka ako. Hala, to a point na pinu... <laughs> Sandali lang, kuya. Sandali lang. Yung tanong mo na yan, nabilang ko eh. Yung beses mo nang tinanong sa akin. Ano ba, naglulokohan tayo? Kasi araw-araw na, sa kada oras na pumapata, Nagbabayad ako sa mga tao na ito. Lugi ako. Ginanon ko. Ako ay lalabas na ngayon. Mag-field work. Ako bahala ka sa buhay mo. <laughs> Ginanon ko talaga yung military. Sa so, sobrang galit ko na paghihinalaan ako. Tapos maayos naman yung coordination ko. May papeles ako. Kompleto na. Pinakita ko na sa kanya. Days before, weeks before, nag-coordinate ako sa may main nila. Ganon pa rin ang ginagawa. Hala. Sabi ko, bahala ka sa buhay mo. Ako ay aalis na, sabi ni Nick Dye sa akin. Ma'am, ako nang kumausap, umalis ka na kasi nagalit na nga ako po, nainis ako. Pero anyway, this is a, a danger that the uh, scientific community should address. Dapat talaga may hanapan natin ang paraan ito para ma-reduce yung, yung, yung risk and yung danger to us while we do field work. Kasi nakakainis na yung gano'n eh. 
O, lagi na lang, lagi na lang talaga. MPA kami dahil may larga bista, dahil may sako-sako ng bigas, dahil may mga kagamitan na spotting scope. Uh, ano na kagad? NPA? Ay, nainis ako. <laughs> Naku, anyway, ang dami ko lang na kwento. Sige, Eric, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, from from the difficulties in the field, so, to be more specific, no? uh, Ma'am Sweepy, best and worst experience uh, while doing field work? Best and worst experience while doing field work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, siguro yung pinaka-recent, kasi yun yung, ano, um, ah, hindi pala, not so recent naman pala. We got lost sa forest. Um, kasama, kasama ko sila, Arvin, Abby, um, and Ro, ah, uh, Oh no, hindi ko kasama si Rolly. So, Arvin and Abby lang and other um, um, museum people. Tama nga ba? Or kami lang talaga yun. <laughs> kami lang yung na-lost. We were, ano, we, we hiked for like, from, malis kami ng camp ng um, 2 p.m. Tama nga ba yun, Arvs? 2 p.m. Nakabalik kami the next day, 7 a.m. Yung ganon, kasi um, uh, that time may bagyo, hindi namin alam. Pag nandun ka sa mountain, nandun ka sa taas ng bundok, hindi mo alam kung anong nangyayari. Sa, so ano ka, um, naka-black out ka sa mga news. Hindi mo alam kung kailan may bagyo, kung kailan, ano, basta mararamdaman mo na lang siya kasi ulan na siya ng ulan. Tapos, so, at that time, yun pala yung kasagsaga na nung, I forgot the bagyo, um, Yolando yata yun, I think. Pero basta uh, sobrang lakas niya. Pero dun sa, 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 sa bundok, syempre, hindi siya ganun kalakas. Di, uh, nalaman ko na lang, dito sa, ano, ay nag siya ng flooding, dito sa Manila. Those rains, oo. Pero mahirap yon kung gabi, tapos naglalakad ka sa forest, um, ang putik ng daan, so uh, wala, uh, magpapaslide ka na lang kasi hindi mo na, hindi ka na makaka ano talaga kasi sli super slippery na. Tapos uh, yung trail, wala kang masyadong mahawakan, kundi puro sanga-sanga. So, Hindi ko na iniintindi kung ano yung nakasabit sa mga sanga. Sa, si Abby na lang nagsasabi sa akin na later on na, Mama, alam mo ba, isang dangkal na lang yung kamay mo dun sa pit viper. Something like that. Mga ganong bagay. Pero ako hindi ko nakita. Buti na lang din. Or else, nagpanik ako siguro. So, good thing na hindi malabo mata ko at hindi ko masyadong pinapansin yung mga yun. Siguro sa pagod na din kasi... Uh, mga 12 hours siguro yun na, na lakad. Okay. Ang dami pang Oo. Uh, ang reason ay kaya kami na lost kasi iniwan kami ng guide namin. Um, yun yung problema sa field work. Kailangan yung mga magaling ka mag-scrutinize or minsan swerte din, minsan minamalas ka. Napupunta sa yung guide Matigas yung ulo. Pag gusto nila, umuwi na. Uuwi na sila. Ayaw na nilang, ano, ayaw pa na nilang intindihin. At saka kung gusto nila, shortcut, magsushortcut kahit mahirap, kahit bangin yun. Yung gusto nila, yun lang yung masusunod. So, iniwanan niya kami kasi, ewan ko, basta ayaw na niya. Um, um, in, nagulat na lang kami, wala na siya. Nag- Tapos hindi na namin alam which way pabalik sa camp. Yung kasama namin isang guide, may kasama kaming isa pa, pero bata pa siya. Tapos first time niyang sumama, first time niyang mag-guide. So, mabait naman siya, pero hindi niya pakabisado yung kaya. Yung ganun bagay. Pero, anyway, yun yung experience, yung grabe. Kasi, 
the whole night, hindi kami natulog, naglalakad lang kami. <laughs> naglalakad lang kami, tas basang-basa ka na, um, hindi ka makaupo rin kasi wala kang uupuan kasi putik. Tapos, hindi ka na naglalakad pala. Hindi pala lakad yun. Padulas lang. Puro pa slide. Tapos, kailangan mo rin mag-ingat kasi baka maderetsyo ka dun sa sa rabin. yon Tapos, um, ano yung isa? Worst? Worst lang? Or... Doon na sa best experience mo. Sa so best? Uh-huh. Ah, okay. Uh, best experience ko sa mga mossy forest. Um, ewan ko, walang, wala masyadong lamok. Um, depende sa mossy forest. Merong mossy forest kasi na maraming uh, climatic. Isa pa yon Isa pang, ano yon isa pang worst experience yon yung mga uh, leeches. Uh, leeches from the ground, from the from the trees, kahit saan, pumatalon lang sila, magugulat ka na lang na sa balat mo na sila. So, yun. Uh, and if you have allergies sa mga uh, bites nila, nagkakaroon ng reaction yung yung dugo mo. So, magkakaroon ng infection kahit hindi mo siya kinakamot. Tapos, or, or sobrang kate. So, yung matagal gumaling. So, isa yun sa so worst din pala. And then, yun. So, yung best is um, like yung Amu- Mount Amuyao. I love that place. Um, Mount Pulag din, pero mas okay sa akin ang Mount Amuyao. So, walang lamo Tapos, andon lahat ng gusto kong animals, andun na itong daga. <laughs> Tapos yung mga bats na nandu doon, um, madami din siya. And, 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 uh, um, yung time kasi na yun, um, bago-bago lang ako, uh, yun yung first kong makakita ng mga bats na from the forest talaga. So, ang um, cute. Yung ganun, ma-amaze ka. Yun. Although, ano siya, yung height niya is hindi biro kasi talagang matarik and then mahihingal ka. Ganun. Kailangan lang ng stamina. Good thing bata pa ako nun. Pero kung siguro ngayon, ewan ko, kung ilang days ko yun aakyatin. Hindi ko na sure. Pero, yun. Um, tapos walang, walang mga, walang aberya, walang, walang robbery. Minsan kasi nananakawan ka sa field, sa, sa camp, mga ganun. Things like that. Or, or may nangyayaring uh, like yung may nagkakasakit mga ganon. Tapos kung rainy season, uh, yon you're you'll be swimming sa mga sa ano, sa flood dun sa loob ng tent mo. Mga ganong bagay. So uh yon, um yun yung best para sa akin, yung walang aberya. Tapos smooth sailing lang hanggang pag uwi mo, pag kuha niyo ng transport permit for the specimens um lahat planchado yon although depende yon sa planning kasi if you plan ahead na maayos yung planning mo um uh, um uh, mas better kung eh, so for yung mga students or yung mga gusto mag ano ng research uh, kailangan talaga ano uh, magplan kayo ng maayos para and always have um uh, back a plan. Expect the worst lagi. Kasi hindi laging masaya ang field work. Pero yung mga worst na to, eto yung nag, nagpapadagdag sa adventure. Yun lang. Thank you, Ma'am Sweety. Sir Philip, alam kong malapit na ang yung domestic assignment. So what about your best and uh, worst experience uh, field? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, worst experience? Oh, uh, probably... During the time when I was in the field and I learned of my my dad's, my father's uh, untimely demise. So, ang hirap eh. Uh, this was back in 2007. Uh, ito nga yung mahirap sa mga field work. Uh, actually, medyo na trauma na ako na yung nasa field ka, may lalabas na tawag, tawag lang, miss call, hindi mo lang kung ano nangyayari. Yung pala, <laughs> uh, sakon na na. So, uh, nakaka-trauma. So, that was the worst uh, ever. And of course, uh, insurgency, some mga nabanggit nila, nila, nila sweeps, nila, ano, uh, insurgencies, definitely, um, nanakawa ka ng mga guides. Uh, of course, alam naman natin, fieldwork, uh, 
conditions are, are some of the hardest conditions that you you'll ever imagine. Uh, lalo na pag lalakad ka ng apat na araw, uh, let's say Sierra Madre, pataas ng pataas. Of course, your supplies are dwindling. Tinakawa ka pa ng mga guides mo. So, uh, that's the... Uh, mahirap talagang yan. yan. Uh, pero gayang sinabi ni, ni Ms. Vipi kanina, and of course, I'm taking this from the late, great Danny Balete, uh, my mentor, my idol. Uh, he's also a mammalogist. Uh, yung mga abirya na yan, uh, uh, sabi niya, arises from bad planning eh. <laughs> yeah well Danny was a perfectionist definitely but I've joined with Danny on his field work with with Larry Heaney and I would say that that was the best field work that I've ever experienced talagang planchado lahat kung gaano kami tikuloso si si Danilo sa salat ng mga bagay sa mga guides yung pakikipag-usap sa mga sa mga community walang nang yayaring masyadong masama uh, the supplies are all kasyang kasya and of course the, the the science part of the fieldwork was really really fun. Uh, so yun nga, uh, pwede mo maiwasan. So ang advice ko rin sa so, mga estudyante na mag fieldwork, piliin niyo yung mga madadaling lugar na puntahan. Yung it doesn't really involve complex uh, logistical planning. Uh, I mean, kung let's say for example sa UP Visayas, uh, if you can do a survey first of your campus, so be it, madaling gawin niya, lalo na ngayong pandemic. Uh, like ito, mga estudyante ko nung uh, before, uh, no. Uh, pwede within Los Baños na muna, within the UPLB campus. And I would, I would, I would suggest as well, uh, for your students, Eric, na uh, start simple, start ano. Yung was, walang masyadong aberya. Uh, I mean, you know about Murphy's Law, that uh, in, the, in the every field of human endeavor, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. And of course, you, you can minimize that uh, uncertainty. Eh, na, ano. Kung if you want to, medyo dalian lang yung logistical preparations. As long as na very sound yung mga questions, research questions that you want to answer. Pero yun na, that's my, my, my advice. Like, simplihan nyo lang yung lugar na pupuntahan ninyo. Well, huwag muna kayong pumunta, let's say, sa, sa dulo ng Mount Apo or do a elevation transit, let's say, for example. Uh, I don't know, in, in some parts of Panay, in Pandan Peninsula, or in Gigantes Island, uh, simply hand lang. Yeah, lang. Oh, I have to leave. Sorry. Uh, no, domestic enough. I, I had fun, Eric. Uh, yeah, papalam na po ko. Uh, regards to all the who participate, mga experts. Uh, good evening. Bye, Philip. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, Philip. Bye-bye. Bye, kids. Now, now, go to the question and answer. Uh, portion of this uh, webinar talk. So we already have some questions here. You know? So let's start with uh, with uh, a question from Mr. Wilhelm Tan. Now, uh, any of the experts may answer this. So as of profession, who won't be rich as a biologist, but is it enough money to at least survive and let's say meet the needs of a family, have one? Uh, I... Uh, uh, probably, Dr. Arvin Jesmos, would you like to comment on this one? Mer meron kasing, ano yan, ha? Meron tanong na may family party. Eh, oh, po, may family party. Uh, uh, yun nga, uh, katulad ng na-mention kanina, uh, if, you're, if you're in research, but if you're doing field biology, or if you want to become a research biologist, uh, um, ma, ma, um, how do I say this? Because hindi lamang naman sa Philippines. If you're doing biodiversity work, kahit sa ang bansa naman, mahirap rin makakuha talaga ng stable na trabaho. Na. Like nung nag-start kami ng, ng biodiversity work, uh, 1989, Tagal na, no? So, mga 30 years pa rin kami na, naka-experience ng ganito. Uh, I, I would say na yung opportunities before mas uh, wala compared sa opportunities ngayon. Alright? Uh, ngayon kasi mas maraming available na grants for projects. May mga NGOs na na pwede kayo mag-apply. Um, pero for the most part yung ang, ang kulang kasi sa 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 ganitong ano natin sa ganitong uh, discipline eh, uh, after you graduate kung 
ano yung kung meron kang mapapasukan na work na you know uh, stable or may item may permanent ma- mahirap kasi <laughs> okay <laughs> unless you, you want to go into the academe okay kasi yun naman yung mga choices natin eh, if you're doing field biology or biodiversity studies nasa academe tayo which is wala namang problema i mean maganda nga yon uh, lalong lalo na i, i ano ka lang i promote ko yung mga state universities go for it na yung lalo na yung mga nasa regions nasa provinces uh, wag na kayong uh, makipag um, don't uh, kung may available na position sa regions go for it uh, wag na sa Manila wag na sa Metro Manila okay uh, for many many reasons uh, una una yung sa nagka pandemic Manila talaga yung uh, pinaka masama yung nangyayari na. and it will happen again kung pandemic ito it's just a start na. so anyway um DNR government yes uh, i would encourage you to go into government uh, kami nila sweepy sa government kami um nila rolina uh, it's a different kind of animal compared to a state university uh, ibang klase talaga siya uh, good 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 and bad no pero um, uh, i guess ano lang naman yan eh kung ano yung mako-contribute mo as a person dun sa biodiversity research yun yung mas importante all right uh, ngos isang uh, ano yan isang um, uh, channel you can start your own ngos and in fact yung mga maliliit na ngos yun pa rin yung talagang very effective in really um, uh, making uh, great contributions sa biodiversity uh, conservation sa Philippines. Uh, we, we did a paper on that mga 15 years ago. Ganun pa rin naman yung situation, honestly. Eh. And so, so yun, uh, it's improving. Again, you, you, you shouldn't be discouraged. Na, pero kung kailangan, if you want kasi yung um, anong term yun? Instant gratification, hindi mangyayari. And um, ang palagi ko na lang sinasabi sa mga students and sa mga young people, na, lalo na mga talented, you know, uh, if you can contribute naman to biodiversity conservation and research, kahit hindi kayo nasa biology or hindi kayo pumasok na NGO or uh, wala kayo sa government, you know, DNR, uh, DOST and others, pero nakakapag-contribute pa rin kayo, meron kayong sariling business, why not, di ba? Okay naman, basta importante... Uh, nandun pa rin. Ang end goal natin is to, to, to learn more about our biodiversity uh, and then to try to cons- uh, contribute to saving them. Right? Pero again, um, since ako ay taong gobyerno rin, for me, basta importante na mapalakas mo yung government. Eh. And yun yung uh, when we joined an NGO about 30 years ago, Haribon, Nordeco, yun yung na-realize namin na uh, importante pa rin na dapat uh, ang government, you know, DNR, especially DNR kasi we're talking about environment and uh, ano, biodiversity na well-equipped, uh, tapos yung mga tao knowledgeable and um, uh, ano siya, malaki yung naitutulong sa, you know, sa 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 um, sa biodiversity conservation. And it's changing naman. Alright? On a positive note, it's changing. Uh, the BMB, the Biodiversity Management Bureau now, is much, much better compared to about 30 years ago nung, uh, nung when we first um you know, bata pa kami, na una kaming nakapag, um, uh, what's this, um, nakawork with, with the government sa DNR. Things are much better now. Kasi importante rin yung tao. Okay, as long as you have good people in the government, uh, okay yan. Kahit tahimik lang kayo, usually kasi yung mga tahimik, yun yung mga, di ba? yung mga may ingay, yun yung mga, Puro maingay lang. <laughs> uh, 
uh, just do your stuff. Uh, yun nga, uh, since mga bata pa kayo, do good science, you know, uh, just uh, galingan nyo, you, you collaborate, you listen to your mentors, uh, uh, ask for advice, be kind, okay? Huwag kayong magmamayabang. Importante yun. Eh. Isa yung sa mga natutunan ko, huwag kayong magmamayabang masyado. Kahit konti lang. Pero huwag masyado, ha? And, um, yeah, uh, if you could uh, be in a state university or private university, uh, as long as you're doing your, your, your good science, the, you're, you're doing good. So. Thank you, sir. So my question, I, I, from Mr. Perez Belen, so this, it is a little bit uh, an, an interesting question. So I'll cut to the chase. So may puwang po ba ang katutubong kaalaman na i- nila, yung mga, this are, this are, they're talking about uh, mga katutubong field guide, no? Na binabagi nila kapag nagsusulat na tayo ng papel o hanggang ilang po ang contribution nila. Hiwalay po ba ang mga kalamang yon sa mga technical pagdating sa diversity research? Or pinabaubaya na lang natin yun sa mga ethnobiologist? Ma'am Lala, uh, do you have a comment uh, on that question? Well, ako in my experience, um, I hired a local um, uh, local people, no, mga local indigenous people, as number one field guide, number two as um, uh, field assistant. So just like any other person that I hire as a field guide or field assistant, uh, they receive remuneration for that. Um, Pero I do not think that it equates to co-authorship in a paper. But it depends on the study you're doing. Like for example, I have a good friend um, who studies trees and plants in Bataan National Park. Um, What they did was they created a book well, a booklet, a really small one, no? a booklet no? with uh, scientific names and common names and uh, local use of those uh, plants uh, for medicine, no? uh, for folk medicine. And that book was co-authored by not only my friend, who is the botanist, but also the local uh, katutubo guide who helped him. Because um, in that particular case, uh, there was a technical uh, knowledge that was uh, contributed no, by the local person. So, iba-iba uh, iba yung engagement with locals. Um, it depends on the kind of study as well as the expectations, no? Um, pero I, I firmly believe that if the study uh, and the results of the study could not be achieved without the local technical knowledge of the indigenous people, dapat kasama na sila doon sa authorship. Um, yun in uh, palagay, no? Uh, all the others may have uh, their own thoughts. Sige, go ahead. So, that was that's an interesting question. Uh, Ma'am Tess, uh, do you have any experience dealing with uh, uh, guides from India? So, what would, what would be your experience, ma'am? Okay. Um, about... You leave. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, I'm still here. Okay, um, about guides, um, there's only one thing that uh, when, especially when in the field, um, um, I we would always like remember to stay calm and focus and be kind and polite to everybody, including the guides, because they are the ones who would help us in all the things that we do while we are there. So... Um, makikibagay ka talaga um, 
however you uh, kung saan ka like uh, makikibagay ka sa kanila dapat yun yung yun yung basic rule namin at least um when we are yun yung yun lang yung mas share ko na very important and i think it it should um every young technology should also remember thank you thank you ma'am tess sir jc i think you have one student here <laughs> mr sanchez asked from Methodology in UPLB. Uh, I would like to address this question to Professor Gonzalez. When conducting a research on migratory shorebirds, most likely they form flocks in which it is very difficult for us to count. May I ask po if there is any technique on how to count them or what is the proper way on estimating their count? This is more on the method, sir. Anda ako magsagot dun sa ethnobio eh. <laughs> Baka yung gusto niya na po. Nagigit ako ng picture niya. Sagot ko muna yan ha. Sige sir, sir. You can to, uh, to, to follow up on Carmela's uh, comment kanina na tama kasi the, the, the local guides, especially the, the, the indigenous people are amazing. They're there. Kasi alam na nila yung gubat eh. So for me, it was easier for me to conduct my, my research on hornbills mm -hmm. because they were so knowledgeable. Actually, they have their own sense of, of, of uh, natural history. Meron, iba lang yung tawag nila. Uh, even with scientific names, we memorize scientific names and common names, but they have their own um, vernacular names for each of the species that it actually attunes to a particular species. Um, and kilala na nila yung tunog. Actually, here's a picture of, of one of my guides. Um, so it's actually an exchange. You learn from them, but also you teach them. Um, and you don't underestimate na porque ay hindi sila matuto ng science. No. My guide actually learned how to help me put up the, the GPS loggers on these terrific so we can wow. trace them in terms of GIS. And they were the ones helping me uh, identify the food plants. Kasi mm -hmm. by leaf, even by sapling, and even determining which kind of trees ang merong particular nest hole. And it's, it's not a matter of, ano yung kind, they have to, to kind of trust na they will also learn from you. It's just a matter of meeting halfway in translation. And I think that's that's what we need now is 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 um, bridging the gap. Um, so I think one of those questions actually kind of is actually one of the studies being um, promoted now, which is on. For me, our, our case we call it ethnoornithology. Of course, it's ethnobiology. In general, we call it ethnomammalogy, ethno entomology. Uh, it all depends on how we look into the value of. Um, local knowledge in terms of studying ecology and doing conservation work. Because um, we're not only rich in biodiversity, we're also rich in cultural diversity. And I think that's something that we need to put together. Um, there's a lot of, um, we're becoming more modern, but we're losing a lot of information without even documenting them, especially with, uh, with indigenous people. Um, it's not just me, but also with our own dialects. We kanya kanya tayong um, languages and dialects. Parang sinabi natin, if you look at Abbey Base, for example, there's a, a, a translation for Philippine Eagle in German, in Japanese, in... Pag sa atin, ano, hindi pa tayo magkasundo, ano ang official Filipino name ng Philippine Eagle? Someone says Haring Ibon, sabi nyo says Banog, someone says, ano ba talaga ang official Filipino name? Nobody knows. And we don't have that checklist for the Philippines. Kasi tayo palang hindi na tayo magkasundo. But also in Cebuano. So um, in UP Visayas, we have a list of all the birds in, Cebuano, in, in the local language. Anong tawag nyo sa Trisparo? Anyone from, from UP Visayas who would uh, answer that? <laughs> you see, when you're in Cebu, it's called Gorion. It's the old name in Spanish. But in Cebu, yeah. it's called Mayang Simbahan. In another place, it's called Mayang Bato. I think it's something that we need to look into not just with, indi with indigenous, but also with local knowledge. Kailangan na natin document not just with birds, but also with herps, with, with reptiles, with mammals, and even yeah, biological diversity encompasses our heritage and even our heritage. And magpa 500 years na tayo, hindi pa natin alam. So, um, yeah, so for us, it's kind of putting together, um, there's very few studies on birds in terms of of ethno-ornithology, and we hope to kind of promote that further. And, hila pa ako na isa. 
Sige lang, sir. Given the fact that we're, stead- we're talking about UP Visayas, I think it's, it's high time that if your forte is marine, then why not put things together? There are vertebrates and tetrapods that need to be studied, including <laughs> the birds and the water birds. It's, it's kind of difficult because Konti pa rin yung information natin about um, the biology of, of a lot of seabirds in the Philippines, including one species which is the Worcester's uh, black noddy, na, na lagay na natin as critically endangered. So actually, if you have this one, you can actually get and download for free. I'll promote ko na rin to sa red list kasi members po kami lahat ng red list committee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for the so time, actually, actually members of the red list committee. Both so of us in the Philippines. Yes, you can download this from the BMBE library. If you go to the BMB website, there's a lot of things you can download, including the red list. And that can help you kind of identify, sort of, including the seabirds, which are also critically endangered. And um, now going back to, sorry, sorry. Sino yan? Ayan, okay. Michael, ikaw ba nagtanong? Si Michael, uh, Michael ka po atay nagtanong. Yeah, I Doc Sanchez. Hello. I, so yeah, uh, you talked about uh, seabird, uh, water birds. It is very difficult to count them, um, and I think it's more the matter of using the right techniques. So one is you can so picture natin eto yung nangyayari sa yo, kasi gumagalaw sila, mahirap sila count. One is you take, <laughs> you take a snapshot. Pag tumigil na sila, which hindi pa sila tumitigil. Sabi na tumigil siya. So you can use that in terms of a technique. And now because you have drones, you can do it from the top. It's a matter of differentiating the species from each other. So maganda pag hindi ka nung kapare-pareho. But again, with water birds, it's a little difficult because they kind of look the same. So it's a matter of practice. Another is you do the count itself. Yung N20, 30, 40, 50. It's not going to be accurate. But as you practice with certain, say, a picture, you know, but practice ka sa isang video na ganito until you get the correct number. So it's a matter of, of doing the practice. Yung karo kakabilis mag-count. Again, are you counting individual species uh, or counting as a group in terms of the numbers of birds? And of course, eh, doon na papasok yung estimation and when you do the distance sampling, um, you actually use a certain value para pwede mo siyang gamitin later on for a calculation. So you estimate in a value. You're not actually exact counting. Iba yung direct count, iba yung estimation. Kasi estimation, hindi mo talaga sure kung ilan yung nakita mo. But you're giving the best guess for you. And you can use a lot of bioinformatic program, bioinformatic, a lot of applications and programs online to help you address those issues, including you know, in a distance program. So getting a subset and then getting the, the number of that subset and then, then ngayon, you use Bayesian statistics to help increase the number pag kulang yung sampling mo. So maraming actually, um, so what amazing now is because everything's available online. It's a matter of just accessing it. And with the R program or the R package, it, there's a, a lot of things you can do with statistics. So I hope I was able to answer your question with that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So uh, it's already 7 o'clock. Baka nagugutom na. Baka patay na ako ng, ni, ni Ma'am May. Sigur to baka gutom na sila. Hindi pa sila nakakain. At saka ni Ma'am, nila Ma'am Lala, nila Sir JC, baka gutom na sila. But anyway, no, uh, thank you to the experts. But before we this focus group discussion uh, for the experts that are still present, no, I would like to ask this uh, question uh, so that the, our students are will be more inspired to do ecological and diversity studies. Uh, so, Sir Roli, so what advice could you give to our students, especially those who are interested in pursuing careers in research and field biology? Ano, Sir, ang may advice niya sa kanila if they want to pursue this career in research? Uh, very, basically, uh, be yourself lang po sa sa maging totoo lang kayo sa sarili nyo kung masaya kayo doon sa or passionate kayo doon sa work na yan ay ang may advice ko po ay go for it. Uh, kung may opportunity po kayo at masaya kayo doon, uh, yun po ang importante. Uh, 
yeah, we should go for it. So, yun po yung pinaka, uh, yun, yun na po yun. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Roddy. Uh, Ma'am Sweepy, any advice for our students? Ma'am Sweepy, naka-mute ka. Okay. So, yung advice ko is for um, you have to love what you do so that kasi pag love mo yung ginagawa mo, it doesn't seem like work. And um, for, para sa para sa uh, uh, field ng biology. Um, sabi nga kanina ni, ni Doc Arts, um, don't expect na nayayaman ka. Um, ganon din sabi ni Lala. Don't expect na you get rich. Kasi um, swerte-swerte lang yon. <laughs> Most of the time, hindi. Pero you'll get by. You'll get by. Depende sa yon. Um, um, basta you live within your means. And then, um, para maging successful kayo, first step, connect to experts. Uh, talk to the experts kasi sila yung magiging mentor nyo. Yan yung mga professors nyo. Or kung hindi nyo man professors, um, reach out to these, ano, to these experts. Collaborate. Um, collaborate with them. And then, um, i, ano ko lang yung sinabi ni Rolly, kung gusto nyo talaga yung uh, biology or a uh, field biologist um, doing research in ecological surveys, mga ganyan, uh, just follow your heart. Follow your heart. Kasi at least, pag, later on, pag-graduate nyo, tapos naghanap kayo ng trabaho, Basta i-enjoy nyo. When you follow your heart, mag-e-enjoy din kayo. Pag, kasi pag, pag hindi kayo na nag -e enjoy baka dun pa lang sa ano, tapusin mo na, ayaw mo na. Kasi ay, ayoko, hindi, ko, hindi ito para sa akin. So dapat dun pa lang malaman mo na kung, kung nag -e enjoy ka dyan sa ginagawa mo. Kung nag -e enjoy ka, then go for it. Tapos later on, pag naghahanap ka na ng trabaho, tapos hindi ka maswerte na um, hindi high earning hindi hindi masyadong malaki yung yung tinatanggap mo na na compensation well at least masabi mo sa sarili mo nag-enjoy ka you have the great adventure of your life or kung nasa nagtuturo ka nasa academic ka masaya ka kasi maraming estudyante ang natuto sa iyo Marami kang na, na, na guide or na mentor. Yun. Um, and then, um, yung sinabi ni Doc Arts kanina, it's not about being famous. Um, basta, just do good science. Um, kung ano yung nagawa mo na, 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 na research, Kung ano yung, public, yung publication mo, that will speak for you. For you. Yun. Yun lang po. Thank you, Ma'am Sweetie. So, gutom na ata yung asawa ko. Ma'am Abby, your advice to our students? Especially, hindi nakakalayo yung mga edad natin sa kanila. Grabe ka naman. Gutom hindi matayo. Matayo. <laughs> um, siguro, it, uh, yung sasabihin ko, it's different from them. Kasi nga, um, sila is nasa ano na eh, um kumbaga it, they are already in their led ano na um they uh, they're already ano nasa legacy stage na sila and in, yung in, stage, in short matanda na kami ganun Oy grabe naman sa hindi na hindi <laughs> <laughs> ano legacy stage na sila, which na ano na um kumbaga they experience a lot na siguro yung sa akin as part na ayun nga same as the other participants na we are all starting. Siguro una ang na, ang una kong ma, una is go and look for a mentor na talagang 
ano yung magpapalaki sa iyo kung ko i-mentor ka talaga niya all the way um which is yung uh, yung mentor na doon sa field na gusto mo talagang gawin yon look for that which is uh sabi nga nila it's ano yun eh um hindi man siya pero um sa ngayon medyo ano siya um parang uh, ngayon madali siyang gawin kasi um online but um and if there's the opportunity na na may lumapit na sa iyo or nagbigay na sa opportunity grab it if you felt na ito na yon next is listen to your mentors yan yan listen to them kasi if you want to be like them uh syempre you listen and gayahin mo din kung ano yung ano yung mga ginagawa nila the good one syempre then Um, once na na, nandun ka na sa flow or nandun ka na sa na, na, nakapasok ka na ginagawa mo yung ginagawa nila always ano always um, so, ang laging ang turo sa akin ano ng, ng mentor ko always give ano always uh, give, uh, give uh, gratitude yan huwag kayong makakalimot thank uh, always thank everyone always thank your uh, your yung mga nakakasama sa trabaho then um always be humble kahit ano na yung narating niyo always be grounded yan kasi yan yung ano um yan yan yung ano um wag niyo kakalimutan and lastly is um ano um ito. uh lastly is Um, ayun, always be kind. Always be kind. Kasi yung kindness nyo, yun, dun ka, ano, mara, ma, ano, um, malayo mararating ng kindness nyo. Sabi nga sa akin ng, ano, sabi nga sa akin ng mentor ko, um, sometimes, uh, they look at your attitude, the way you, attitude on your work, not, sometimes, not kung, so, kung magaling ka ba or hindi. Kasi kung magaling ka naman, pero hindi ka marunong makisama. Mahirap 'yon. So, 'yon. 'Yun yung mga nat- actually natutunan ko sa kanilang lahat 'yan. So, oh, 'yon. 'Yun lang na, 'yun lang po. Oh, maming mami na si uh, si Abi. Uh. Pwede na mag-anak to, pwede na mag-kids to. <laughs> Ang galing. Oh, oh mami na eh. Mami, <laughs> walang pang daddy, wag ganun. <laughs> so, ma'am, uh, ma'am Lala, your uh Hi, okay. To our studio. Um, sige, uh Well, the thing that helped me the most was actually the time I spent as a volunteer for quite a long time. <laughs> Puro ako volunteer work, guys. Nako, pagtingnan mo sa CV ko siguro, um, after I graduated, siguro more than half of that time, na mula noon hanggang ngayon, puro volunteer work yun. Meaning, I didn't get any pay. Covered yung aking mga pamasahe, pagkain ko sa field, covered yun. Uh, I had to pay a little bit. Um, pero most of it, uh, wala akong compensation. No? Those were the times that I learned so much. Kahit saan, kaliwat ka na, nag-volunteer ako. Uh, kung sino may field work doon, ala, sama. Pumunta ng bundok dito, may ano field work, mga titingin ng mga ibon. Ala, sama din ako. Uh, pupunta ng Babuyan Islands to go and, and look at the animals there. Sama ako. Eh, because of that, we discovered the Kalayan Rail. No? Uh, yun. Uh, you learn from so many people. Um, don't be afraid to say that you don't know anything. Isa yan. Uh, wag kang... Ay, Proud ako eh. Ayoko sabihin nila na wala akong alam. Eh, wala ka naman talagang alam. O, di ba? Eh, sabihin mo na nga na wala kang alam. Uh, kasi, you will not learn anything kung hindi ka mag... If you don't come out and say it na you don't know anything. No? Um, there are so many people who are so kind and so um, generous with what they know. Ako si Kuya JC. Si Sir RV, natuto ako niya ng mga ahas, mga ganun. Well, tumitingin na ako pero hindi naman ako tinuruan talaga kasi hindi naman field ko. Pero 
natuto ako. Uh, si mga kwentuhan lang, natututo ako. Sa experiences ng iba, natututo ako, no? Um, yun, marunong ka makibagay sa ibang tao kasi uh, iba-iba yung mga pinanggalingan ng mga tao na yan. And uh, ang isa ko na ano doon, um, invest in what you like, in, in, in your passion. Invest in it. No? Akakabili ko lang. Ay, hindi. Ito, birds of the world. Nako, namulubi ako. Liman libo, mahigit. Yung birds of the Philippines, dalawan libo. Birds of the Philippines, sa bagong libro, dalawan libo. Ala, sabay yun. So, imagine mo, nearly 8,000 pesos yun. Uh, mahigit. So, sabi ko, ano, na ano ako doon na parang na, nasampal ako eh. <laughs> oh, pero yung the point is uh, you learn something, no? Uh, you feed your passion. Uh, hindi mo matutunan 'yan kung hindi ka uh, mag-effort. I-effort mo. Uh, kung may hindi ka alam, puntahan mo yung tao na yun dahil alam niya. Si Ate Sol dati, lagi kong kinukulit 'yun. Siya ang nagturo sa akin maghawak ng mga ahas. May mga kwento ako na nakahuli siya ng ahas, naliligo kami. E underwear lang siya. Nakahawak siya ng ahas na ganun. Anong gagawin ko dito? Wala. Ati Sol, nilagyan ko siya ng tapis ng ganyan, no? Pero yun yung mga funny stories, no? But you learn so much when you go out in the field. You don't learn this while reading a book. Kaya nga pinaatayan ko kayo, kung may mga sudyante pa ako dyan na naandyan ngayon, pinaatayan ko kayo ngayon. Just for you to have a taste of what it's like. Kasi awang-awa ako sa inyo na hindi kayo nakakalabas sa field. Pero, sige, ituloy nyo lang yan. Um, uh, thank you so much for the invite. Uh, ano, sir, ano. So, salamat. Ay, hala. <laughs> sige, sige lang, ma'am. So, last, last but not the, the least, no? <laughs> the least talaga, no, sir, JC. Sir, JC, Your advice to our students and of course to your students which are present as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I know it's going to be nerdy for me. So I will get to share my <laughs> PowerPoint. Now. So one is don't be afraid. Kasi ako, um, I'm a zoologist, yes. I'm the zoology, I'm a zoology, detailed zoology. And I always thought that ah, hindi ko na kailangan ng mall bio, hindi ko na kailangan ng genetics, hindi ko na kailangan ng statistics. And then you realize It's part of the integrative uh, method that you need to study, a holistic approach of what you want to understand. So I wanted to study hornbills because this is the hornbill that I saw in third year college. Ako. I wanted to be a marine biologist, actually. I was able to get two secrets in Puerto Galera. So I said, I'm going to outswim, so I changed to wildlife. I can get a lot of But because of this bird, which flew in front of me and said, and, and actually gave me that inspiration to study hornbills. And it's not just being in the field. There are also information that's already locked in a database or in a museum collection such as this. Maraming information. Yung kinulekta, pinaghirapan ng mga tiga museum is a treasure of data. And now they're putting it also accessible online. Uh, with GBIF. So, and daming pwedeng gamitin in terms of study. Yes, we may be on lockdown or you may be in quarantine, but it's you're not necessarily alone. Kasi everybody's out there and everybody can be tapped in terms of don't be shy to ask questions. Sabi nga nung isang um, na ko na he was, a, he was the uh, uh, Nobel laureate for hemoglobin and uh, pati advisor niya, Nobel laureate. But like, Anong magpapayo mo sa aming mga sadyante? Sabi niya, to be, don't be afraid. If, you, you're, if you're surrounded by greatness, then you will achieve greatness. Kasi yung mga tao mag-mentor sa'yo will then pass on that knowledge to you. Yeah, don't be afraid to do this. It may be a tough thing to do um, molecular work in phylogeny, but it's quite interesting once you get to that. Kasi ito na yung, hindi porke puti na ang namin, hindi na kami mag-add in ng information. So don't be afraid to do something innovative and try new things. And also, I think ito kilala ni Arvin. Arvin, I'm gonna use this kasi kilala niya yung nagsulat nito. So a lot of, a lot of, sabi nga, you, know, uh, you don't have to be always in the field. Hindi naman lahat online. Or hindi lahat bibigay sa'yo. So you have to read and read. Books are still important. Of course, now it's e-books. 
it's more accessible. And you have to read and, and try to, to, to grasp the information that gusto mong achieve for you to be um, inspired. So uh, these are two inspirational people. One is, of course, I met si Paul Early, who I met when I, when I was in my undergrad. He was like, uh, namin siya bird watching sa makiling. And that kind of inspired me to do work further on birds because all of these people I met from Hector to uh, Arnie to, of course, my mamalogist din si Andy. And of course, your friends and people you meet along the way. Arvin's there, Lala. Um, Mahirap na mag-mention, baka may makalimutan ako. Lahat na lang, ano? And everybody, also the teachers and your mentors who are also uh, watching now, is for you to read and then find out what interesting things would inspire you to study. It may, not, it may be simple, but you may use innovative ways to answer those questions. Even a matter of fact that we're looking into ecosystem services. How simple is that? Dibang hirap account ng ecosystem services. But one thing you, you we don't understand is ano ba yung kulang na information in terms of ecosystem services? What are those functional relationships na gusto mong ma-understand? Ma we often study about birds being uh, good bioindicators. Bakit nga ba? Ano ba yung linkages that keep them being important? Is it being a pollinator? Is it being a dispersal? We often say about bats being important dispersal agents. But anybody did disperse nila? Did anybody look at their poop and look at the seeds that they nakinain nila? Yes, may ilan, but still in the Philippines, hindi pa rin natin nasasagot lahat. There's still a lot of things na hindi pa natin nabubuo yung buong story. And that's why natural history is important. You fill in those gaps and you fill in the answers that we need to fill in. And with that, I thank you. And I hope you find the questions that you want to answer even how simple it is and find the right person to ask for the right question. Thank you. Yeah, Daisy. So to close this, again, to close this uh, Sir Arvin, your advice? Sige. Uh, itliang ko na lang kasi quite late na for all. Eh, no? uh, uh, definitely, ko ano yung sinabi ng mga, uh, uh, mga speakers sa ating kanina, you know, itignan nyo mabuti kung ano yung mag apply sa inyo, and then follow them. Kasi um, very important kasi yung experience. Eh. Alright, tandaan nyo yan, especially kayo mga young people. Pero I just want to mention uh, a few things. No? Nasa, if you're in your 20s, uh, or you know, a little, uh, bago kayo mag-20, ito kasi yung, uh, may mga studies na nagsasabi na ito yung period of your life na yung creative vitty ninyo, yung hormones nyo, yung juices, uh, talagang tataas. Okay? Creative, creativity, eh. Ang iba tayong creative. So, <laughs> ibang hormones. Uh, ito yung time na marami kayong ideas, ano yung mga, you know, uh, uh, mga stuff na gusto nyo yung gawin. Alright? Go for that. Uh, gawin nyo lang kung ano yung mga gusto ninyo. Because eventually things will fall into the right places, tama na. Okay, tandaan niyo na eventually if you do your homework, if you do your, if you do good uh, stuff, uh, things will work out fine. Okay, tandaan niyo yon. Wag kayo ang uh, sagri dada ng tigko lang to Eric. Lalo na yung mga bata na merong pinagdadaanan, you know, emotional. Uh, don't worry too much. Okay? Uh, kasi nandiyan naman yung mga look for your support group. Okay? Uh, life is very, you know, uh, very um, valuable. Huwag nyo sasayangin. Di ba? Uh, you can do a lot. Eh. So, lalo na kung nasa stage pa kayo na bata pa kayo. Maraming marami pa kayo magagawa. Tandaan nyo lang yun. And uh, importante nga rin yung, yeah, importante yung mentor mentorship. Hindi lamang naman sa mentors, eh, sa mga mas nakakatanda, sa mga friends. Right? Uh, may mga study na the, the, the uh, happiness is really measured by yung mga relationship ninyo sa family, sa friends, and sa loved ones. Yun, yun talaga yung ultimate so, uh, true uh, measure ng happiness. Right? So tatandaan nyo yan, things will work out fine. Uh, um, in, in, be kind to people. I-respeto niya lang yung mga tao. 
Uh, siguro magpapakita lang. Eric, magpapakita lang ako ng counting slides. Ha? Sige, Sana yung ito kay JC. Meron siyang slides. <laughs> sandali lang to ha, mga, mga chong. Ha? Uh, sandaling sandali lang to. Okay, if I can find my slide. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Arv. Sa inyo nakalagay ito sa message ni Eric. Eh. Uh, <laughs> kita niya, kita niya. Yeah, Okay. Uh, yung minention nila, Abby, and so on, na uh, kung meron kayong mentor, swerte kayo, kung meron kayong advisor, ate, kuya, or you know, nilo- nilo-look upon, uh, malaki yung matutulong nila. Uh, pero siguro ang magiging advice ko rin sa mga mas mga nakakatanda na ngayon, kung meron kayong mga sudyante na kailangan ng tulong, tulungan nyo sila. Okay. Yun yung hindi hindi ko makakalimutan when we were starting pa lang, na isang, ito, itong naka-thumbs down na tao. Si Hector Miranda. Sinama niya kami sa Kalawit Island sa Palawan. Kasi like um, many of us, hindi namin alam kung ano yung gagawin namin. Eh. Hindi namin gusto mag-medicine kasi walang pera, hindi kaya ng utak, uh, walang opportunity, resources, and so on. So siya yung nag-introduce sa amin sa field biology. You know, siya pa yung nagsasabi, oh, mag-bird watching tayo. Noong time na yun, 1989, parang... What the, what the, you know, is bird watching? Ano yan? So, why do you do that? Pero maganda pala. So, importante yun, okay? You find time to your, for your student, and then kayo naman as students, you ask help from other people. And then, yun nga, uh, merok, uh, yeah, eventually, may, you know, mamimit niyo yung mga people who are important na mga kapag, Uh, collaborate kayo, magbibigay ng good advice and makatulong sa inyo. Uh, be always grateful. Okay, yun lang naman masasabi ko. Be grateful. Uh, and, and then, yun nga, the, the world is such a beautiful place, lalo na yung Pilipinas. Huwag kayong madadaan. Kung meron kayong, you know, something, you know, uh, eating up uh, at you, tandaan niya lang na maganda pa rin yung mundo. Okay, in spite na kung anong nangyayari ngayon, mga pandemics, nasisira yung Amazons, may mga walang kwenta tayong leaders, mga boss, na mawala, mga wala rin kwenta, pero maganda pa rin yung mundo. <clears throat> okay, be, uh, be blessed. Yun lang. I, I, may mga blessings pa rin tayong dumarating. Alright? And then, finally, uh, basta yun nga, um, i, tignan nyo mabuti. Again, nasa stage kayo na importante itong stage na to, eh, ng life nyo. Kasi ito yung magsaset ng direction sa inyo. Right? And then, sana pag umabot na kayo sa edad namin na medyo experience na may mga wisdom na kuno, uh, medyo tanders na to be quite blunt about it, sana hindi tayo tumanda na paurong. Kasi ang dami namin kilala <laughs> sa gobyerno na tumatanda ng paurong. Okay? Sana hindi tayo maging ganun. Right? If you want to serve the people, serve the people. If you want to to be a good biologist, uh, you know, mammalogist, ornithologist, entomologist, herpetologist, go for it. And with that, thank you everyone, uh, especially sa mga professors or mga good friends out there. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for inviting us here. Thank, thank you, you so much. Sana may na-impart kami sa inyong lahat. So once again, uh, thank you to our uh, panel of experts who have graced us today. Uh, na ginabit tayo <laughs> na baka nag- eh. hindi ako makakapagpa-food panda. Uh, Pamiyamaya na lang. So anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, once again, uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, the next episode will be on April 5 with that will be on terrestrial invertebrates followed by freshwater uh, sampling on April 6. Then we'll... Uh, But then on April 16, we'll be on ecology and conservation. So those are the remaining foods that we have for this web series. So before everybody goes, I would like you to uh, I would like to ask of you to uh, open your cameras. A short picture taking. Ilan pages? So kindly, hopefully, na ba bear with me. five pages tayo. So kindly open your cameras. Po, thank you. Okay. So let's start. So first page, no? Dami pala, eh. Uh, kanina nga, sir, mas mayroon. Anyway, 
first state. Ano nung schools to? UST, UP, ano pa? Uh, across the Philippines, sir, I think ang maraming attendees. May Though, LSU? UP, LB, LB, some uh, FSU, U. So, okay, first page, one, two, three. Next page. One, two, three. Page. One, two, three. One, two, three. And last page. One, two, three. Uh, dun sa personal secretary ko, did you also take your did you also take pictures? Yes, sir. Thank you very much to my personal secretary. So, I, oh, thank you for being with us. So the discussion will be uploaded via YouTube. Kung mabilis-bilis ang internet uploaded, so I'll